1953, supersonic flight comes of age when the U.S. Air Force gets a fleet of F-100 Super Sabres, the first production run of a supersonic fighter. Before that, only experimental test planes could break the sound barrier. After four years of development, the F-100 ushers in a new era, breaking both the subsonic and supersonic world speed records. With supersonic flight, the F-100 marks the dividing line between first and second generation fighters. The coincidental 100 designation leads the Air Force to call these first supersonic types the Century Series fighters. Welcome to Scale Model Kit Review. This is Steve Sutton with another review for you. This time, it's 148 scale high tech F100D Super Saber by Monogram. Let's uh, get a closer look at the side of the box here. Same art on the side. And basically, some photographs of the completed model. I picked up this kit uh, used online and it's a kit dating back from 1981 so let's open up the box and see what it, what it looks like inside. Uh, first off we've got the kit instructions here by monogram, your typical kit instructions. This is kit 5471. And by the way, this uh, F100 kit, and along with the uh, F105, F101, and uh, F104 are very detailed kits for back in the day when they did come out. And this is the uh, decals that came along with the kit. Very colorful. And it's still great shape. They're not you have no signs of yellowing or anything. Great shape still. <clears throat> Some parts did fall off the sprues. And it looks like they're bagged there. Um, the reason why they call it a high-tech kit is because it did come with photo etch. So let me see if I can get a better view of this uh, close-up of the photo etch came along with the kit. Okay, so it looks like some exhaust pieces, some antennas, and so forth. Maybe some seatbelt stuff, I can't tell. And then of course uh, some parts did fall off, but the seller was really nice to bag all these pieces up for me. Okay. And you can kind of see the detail of the cockpit, right? Very well detailed. Really, this uh, paints up really nice and really isn't necessary to get in the aftermarket uh, cockpit sets for it. Uh, fuselage half, top half, bottom half type configuration, uh, raised and recessed panel line detail. Of course, the bottom portion of the kit here, very detailed. Inside the wheel wells, air brake detail, some panels that are opened up, nose guns, detail for the for the armament for the for the guns on the nose. I mean, it's a very detailed kit for its age for 1981. <clears throat> Moving on, very detailed landing gear, bombs, fuel tanks, like I said mostly raised detail. Moving along with the wings, 
the bottom of the wing. Openings for the landing gear. Once again, some beef up plates on the wing. Once again, very raised detail, but some, some recessed, especially on the uh, flight control surfaces, flaps and ailerons, which can be cut out and repositioned as necessary. Makes for a very nice kit. These are still readily available, but not in a high-tech version. High-tech, you're going to have to look for it. And of course, there's some markings on the outside there that would have to be sanded down. Nice. And lastly, detail on the seat. You know, they got uh, already got the seat belts on there, so you know you, this is the case where you might want to go ahead and get an aftermarket uh, ejection seat for this airplane. More landing gear, more gun stuff. It looks like you get a ladder, an entry ladder for it. Air refueling probes, if you so so see fit to have those installed. Uh, horizontal stabilizer, tail rudder, very well detailed. It's all raised paneling, but you know there's nothing wrong with that. That's the way most kits were done back in the day. And basic uh, detail for the tires. And there's some you know good detail for the brakes on the tires. More components for the ammunition that can be shown with the, the panel access panel for the machine gun access on the side of the fuselage. More detail for the ejection seat. Let's look at the instrument panel. Instrument panel very detailed. Let me, uh, get a good shot of it. There you go. Overall, it's a very good kit. All right, here's uh, the fuselage mocked up, two halves together, put together. And the kit uh, sits a little bit, oh, just about 11 inches long from the front to the uh, horizontal stabilizers in the back, uh, elevators and all of that. Um, goes as well, goes together very well. The intake looks very nice. I mean, it looks like it's going to take very little cleanup to uh, bring that out. I believe there's a nose piece that goes on this too to make it smaller, but it should take very, very uh, minor, minor cleanup. I just I like the way they designed the two halves together on this. You're gonna you're gonna lose very little detail when it comes time to uh, uh, fill, you know building this this half together and uh, you know use your putty sparingly and sanding sparing sparingly and it should uh, come out really nice. And here's the clear pieces, the canopy, two piece canopy, so it can be either opened or closed. Uh, very clear, very nice. Um, also give you a clear piece for the gun sight and for the landing lights. Here's a closer view of the cockpit. Uh, very well detailed. Switches, throttles, You know, it does make for a nice build without you having to buy any aftermarket stuff. Here's the intake. It attaches to the front. There's a little bit of flash there, but that makes it nice because really it's almost like a seamless intake. So, really going to be very little cleanup and just a little bit of filler around the edges where it attaches came with uh, two different exhausts. Uh, the kit instructions only show one. They are different looking exhausts. So I'm not sure why they're different. Maybe a different model. Maybe one's the C and the other one's the, uh, the D. But they're not telling me in the kit instructions. So surprisingly enough, I see two different exhausts with this kit. 
and they do look a lot different. Give you a closer look at the decals. And I stand corrected. This is a 1991 kit, not an 81 kit. Very detailed. building this for a friend of mine who flew these in the Air National Guard. He flew for the Oklahoma Air Guard out of Tulsa and also flew for the Arizona Air Guard in Tucson. So these were the D models. He flew both the D models and the F models. Um, looking at getting the F model in the mail from Trumpeter and I'll do a review on that. Thanks for watching and uh, please rate and subscribe to my channel. The Super Sabre's design springs from a long line of successful development projects at the North American Company. By the late 1950s, North American prides itself on having built the Mustang and the Sabre, two of the greatest fighters of World War II and Korea.